Hey everybody, so we're here at Supercomputing 22 and we're talking to Brian Shervin, my buddy, uh, who's also from the UK, but he's kind of got a funny accent for that. Uh, Brian's from our HPC specialist team and he knows all there is to know about Slurm and in particular how to integrate it with licensed applications so we can do cool license management. This is complicated, right, because well, it's sort of complicated. If somebody's got like a licensed code that they're using, it matters to only spin up the resources when you've got licenses available. Because you might have like, I don't know, 128 licenses to spare. Yeah. You don't want 129 machines running, costing you money when you don't have licenses to exactly. run the code. Duh. Even further than that though is, we want to be able to share the pool of licenses with on-prem resources. So we can okay. do this now in parallel cluster where we just, but it involves us allocating a set of licenses only for the cloud and they'd have to stay there. Right. What we can do here is dynamically do that and we can, we can share the licenses. Right. So you, you've actually recently done this because you've had a customer that's got exactly the scenario. Yeah. Talk us through it. What, what's their scenario? Yeah, so their scenario is they, they have a, it's a CFD application, it's called Moldex. It's yep. for things like plastic injection molding. And it's largely a Windows-based application. Uh, there's a lot of sort of meshing and, uh, you know, typical uh, type engineering type workflow yep. sitting in front of a, a GUI. But there's portions of it that can offload to Linux to as a solver. Yep. Um, and so they burst that to parallel cluster. But they want their engineers to still have access uh, to like their, their local laptop, local workstations, yep. uh, and they want those licenses all shared. Um, so they don't okay. want Parallel Cluster spinning up compute jobs, you know, if a user's already using I, I, it. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. Um, and, and their workflow is, it's a little more complex than that, it's sort of this whole pipeline process that's involved. Um, but the, the crux of it is they're using Parallel Cluster as sort of a, a black box solver. The engineers don't even know that they're using it. It's, it's part of this whole pipeline. Um, they just know that they get the results back. So how does that work in Slurm? How do you do that in Slurm? Right, so um, with Slurm, we have the ability to add just kind of generic resources. Um, the big key that you need in place though is Slurm job accounting, uh, which is actually part of the, the recent uh, Parallel Cluster 3.3 release. And we got another video about that because there's, um, uh, there's a, like a really good tutorial and, and in fact a CloudFormation template, I think, for spinning up the database that you need to service that, yeah, and we've got all that pretty nicely documented. Yeah. In fact, it's, I'll put a link in. It's a, and it's a pretty basic database. Uh, doesn't need to be like uh, high performance. You can run this on like a, a small Graviton uh, database instance. Yep. Uh, size it pretty small. You can make it as highly available as you want. Um, but all you really need to do is have that in place, and you add a couple of parameters to the parallel cluster. Uh, Slurm actually configures a database when it starts up. Uh, okay. So once that's all in place, this is ready to go. Uh, and then what you can do is add add licenses as a resource. Um, right. You can add multiple licenses, uh, and really all it is is it's a counter for Slurm. Slurm has no way of talking to a license manager. Right. And and that's because every license manager is different. Everyone's different. Yeah. There's crazy numbers so out there. So yeah. what we're going to show you is what you kind of need to do to configure that special sauce. But yep. the first part is setting up licenses so that Slurm has a, a count of how many are available. Yep. And then we'll show you how to update that. Okay. Um, so the first part is, yeah, we, we, we add some licenses with this command. Um, it's a pretty basic one. You can update the licenses later. Uh, you can have, you know, you can do this for multiple clusters. So imagine you have different applications, but you only want like one cluster to have certain licenses. You can do that. Right. Um, all sorts of things. The other thing is now that you've got Slurm job accounting, if you start doing like multi-user things, you could restrict what groups and users have access to licenses. So uh, we aren't going to cover that, but that's all possible with yeah, right. Slurm job accounting. So, um, and it's real easy once you have the licenses in there, when you submit a job, it's a one line addition. You basically just dash dash licenses and yep. say how many you want and off you go. That's it. Yeah. So that's essentially saying, just decrement this, I need this five units of something out of this counter, decrement that when you launch my job, if there's some available. Yeah. Um, and then the nice thing is Slurm will hold jobs if there aren't licenses available. Uh, now the important thing to remember though is that is only, right now all that we've talked about is Slurm's view of the licenses. Yeah. We've got to kind of plumb it up to the license manager. So we'll, we'll show okay. you that next. Uh, 
so so what we're looking at right now is a, it's, it's a script that is specific to this application. It's called Moldex. Yep. Um, and it does kind of some weird things and it dumps out all the license information to an XML file. Yeah, this is a bash script. You can do it in Python, but we By basically way, just XML. Yeah, it's 2022. I yeah, yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bless. Yeah. <laughs> but we we dump out uh, the you know, license file. We look through for the specific license we want, how many are available, how many are occupied, and then we just do some math. Yeah. And then you run a single command to update Slurm, uh, the Slurm okay. database, uh, with how many licenses are available. And we just do this uh, as a cron job, just continually running on the head node. So it's. Right. It's essentially just a script that has whatever license manager specific utility you need. You just continually pull and update Slurm's view. And how do you how do you avoid? I mean, is there a possibility of a race condition here? Yeah. So there's that's another part of the secret sauce. So um, to give you a, a little context before we get into the details, this particular application would, if we spun up a node, uh, thinking there were licenses available and there weren't, the application would sit and spin and wait. And that right. means there's Cons a large expensive instance. Consuming resources yeah. that aren't getting used. So, so this particular customer would rather have the node spin up, and it, you know that's two or three minutes of, of compute time that you're paying for while it initializes. Yeah. They'd rather have that spin up, and if a license isn't available, they just kill the job, and you can either scale down the node immediately after that, or they'll run a different job on there because they're running multiple applications. Okay, so yeah. this is their choice. They've chosen that as their yeah. policy for um, dealing and, with And and so what we do is we we basically just in in as I said, they're using this as a black box solver. So they generate the job scripts for the engineers. They just inject an if statement into there. They say we do one more check of the license, and so it basically runs the exact same script. Oh, right. Yeah. You check, oh, if you've okay. got it, then you jump to the application and, and you're off and running. And you've probably, at worst case, lost a few minutes of compute time costs. Right. Right, yeah. you paid for a few minutes of instance time that you didn't need. And the nice thing with this is that that script that's doing the updating is continually running. It will, the, the job is not locked in in the queue. If licenses become available, it will it will start. It will start? Yeah. Okay. So so we don't we don't have to just... It's not like a first in, first out there. Hey, and just yeah. for extra points, given that you've only got seven licenses in total, what happens if somebody launches a job asking for eight? Does it reject it straight it, it, away? Yeah, it, it will give a, I think, an invalid configuration. Oh, yeah. well done. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and so um, that's that's the basis of it. This is in production. They're Again, like I said, they're using it in a, a hybrid setup so that their engineers can run stuff locally, but they can offload the large compute intensive parts to AWS on parallel cluster cool. and not have to worry about splitting their license pools. Okay. So next, what we're looking to do is I want to get this published and then also try and generate uh, configurations for some of the popular applications. So, you know, on AWS, license applications tend to fall in like the CFD space. So things yep. like uh, LS Dyna, uh, Ansys, Star CCM, those are going to be like the top candidates I'd target for you know, the scripts and, and that special oh, wow. sauce that you need, and we'll get try and get that published soon. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, if you need a blog post uh, written, I, I, yep. I know a guy. Yeah. If you learned something from this talk, then please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel so you can find out when more videos like this are available. And if there's an area you'd like to see us go deeper into, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. See you next time.